Hey guys, what's up? So I am super excited today because I finally am nailing down a new styling routine that allows me to flip my part, which I've never been able to do before. I'm also super excited about today's video because we're gonna be talking about what I wish I knew before starting the Curly Girl Method. If you are new to the Curly Girl Method or just wearing your hair curly in general, I think that this will be a super helpful video for you, so let's hop right into it. Okay, number one is double check your ingredients. If you are following the Curly Girl Method, you're not using products that contain sulfates, silicones, or drying alcohols. And early Early on in the method, I was pretty confident that I could read the back of a bottle without double checking the ingredients, which was wrong. There are so many ingredients out there, I honestly don't know why I thought that I could just memorize everything super duper easily, especially when I wasn't doing any research on ingredients at the time. And it turned out that a couple months in, I found out that a couple of my products weren't approved. One of them was even a shampoo that contained a sulfate. So definitely double check your ingredients. What I'd recommend is popping them into an ingredient checking website, which are super duper easy to use. One of my favorites is Is It cg.com. You just copy and paste the ingredients list into the website and it'll tell you yes or no, is this approved? I also like this website because it'll break out ingredients by type. So you'll be able to see what ingredients do what and what category they fall into. So for example, it'll break out cleansing ingredients, protein, oils, etc., which is really helpful when you're trying to learn to read the back of a bottle. Now the next one should not come as a surprise for any of you who've been following me for a while. And this is rotate your products. And I've got a lot of questions about this because if you follow me on Instagram, you see that I use a different product pretty much every time I wash. And some of the messages I've gotten have been like, Brittany, can't I just use one product and only that product? Why do you use so many products? So first off, I am a curly hair blogger, so obviously I have a lot. But second, rotating your products is a great way to keep your hair balance. As we already know, products contain ingredients that are moisturizing and many hair products also contain protein. Curly hair is a balance of protein and moisture. And if you have too much of one or the other, it can kind of throw your hair out of whack. And I can pretty confidently say that most new curlies throw themselves into a state of over moisturization because so many products have moisture and are low on the protein. So what I like to do is rotate between stylers that are highly moisturizing or that are high in protein to keep my hair happy. If I consistently use products that are too moisturizing, my hair is just gonna become limp and flat. If I consistently use products that have too much protein, it's gonna get dry, brittle, and frizzy. So I have to switch it up to make sure that my hair is balanced. Next up, you have to clarify. Now this isn't really something that was recommended by Lorraine Massey, who created the Curly Girl Method, but as the Curly Girl Method has evolved on social media and on Instagram and YouTube, this is a necessary step. So clarifying involves using a slightly stronger cleanser on your hair to make sure that you're getting rid of any buildup. And now what's the problem with buildup? So this can lead to weighed down curls, gunky feeling curls. Have you ever touched your hair and been like, oh, I just feel like there's stuff on it. Buildup can also make your products not work as well. If my products just aren't working correctly, the first thing I'm gonna try is clarifying to make sure I'm getting rid of any buildup that might be on my scalp or on my hair. And too much buildup has pretty negative consequences as well. Scalp buildup can lead to greasy hair and even hair loss if the follicles get clogged. So we wanna make sure that we're taking care of our scalp and keeping everything clean. So here's how I clarify. Two of my favorite shampoos are Bounce Curl Moisturizing Shampoo and Bounce Curl Clarifying Shampoo. I'll use the moisturizing shampoo when I wash during the week and I'll use the clarifying shampoo once a week to make sure that my hair is extra clean. Another note on clarifying is that many curlies like to use a sulfate every once in a while to make sure that their hair is absolutely totally clean. This is not something that I would personally do all the time. It's more so a once a month deep clean kind of thing for me. And it's definitely something that I would recommend deep conditioning after because sulfates can be drying, but it's a great way to make sure that your hair is totally reset, clean slate. If you feel like you have a lot of buildup, this gets rid of it. All right, next up is Deep conditioning is not a gimmick. This is something I thought for a very long time. I'm a very skeptical person. If someone tells me that I need to buy a product, I'm like, why? I was kind of like, I already have a conditioner. 
what's the freaking difference? And holy moly, there's a difference. A deep conditioner gives you like an extra shot of moisture and is meant to be left on for 10 to 30 minutes. The first deep conditioner I ever tried was Briogeo Don't Despair Repair and it's consequently become my all-time favorite deep conditioner. The first time I used it was just on a whim. I just decided like, oh hey, I have a sample, why not? And I was like, holy crap, my hair feels so different. I guess I didn't realize that my hair had gotten a little dry over time and once I used this deep conditioner, my curls sprung up again and felt so soft. And I even knew before my hair dried that the deep conditioner had worked because when I was applying my products, it felt so smooth and my hair was clumping so nicely in the shower that I was like, okay, I'm gonna purchase a full size even before I saw the final results. So I like to deep condition once a week, but that's just me who uses a lot of high protein products. So kind of feel it out, see how often you need to deep condition. Briogeo Don't Despair Repair has protein as well. So I love a product that kind of gives you a balance of protein and moisture. Another option that I love is Kinky Curly Stellar Strands. That's a great drugstore option. And then Anasi also has a fantastic one with protein as well, which is their mango and hemp deep conditioner, I believe it's called. I was also recently sent this deep conditioner from Zotos, which is another affordable option. Haven't tried it yet, but if you wanna know my thoughts, make sure to follow me on Instagram. That's where I'll be posting all of my updates. But if you guys are interested in some sort of video with Zotos, cause I did get a bunch of products from them, let me know in the comments down below. All right, next up, it's okay if you don't have a long lasting wash. And this is especially true for those of you that also follow me on Instagram. I've seen some accounts who have awesome hair on day six without refreshing. Here's the thing, not everyone's hair has the ability to go that long. My hair, for example, if I have an awesome wash day, I can usually get to day four, but that's like once in a blue moon. That does not happen often. Typically, I can wear my hair down day one, and day two, and then day three is kind of up in the air. Maybe I'll wear a headband or maybe I'll just throw it up and wash the next day. But for some of you, me getting to day three with my hair down is still considered a lot. So let's talk about what you can do to extend your wash day. So first off, you have to have a good day one for your wash to last. So if your hair isn't even lasting to day two, then you should be really focusing on the products that you're using and product application. And the second thing I would recommend is making sure that you're wearing a proper overnight protection. Now I just posted a tutorial on my Instagram on what protection I have, how to use it, and description of each, so make sure to check my Instagram and my IGTV if you're interested in that. But I absolutely could not get multi-day hair unless I wore something to bed, so something like a buff or a silk scarf to make sure that my hair is protected overnight. I'm a super active sleeper, so if I don't wear that, I end up looking like Beethoven. And the last thing that I wish I knew is not really something that I wish I knew, but something that I wish more new curlies knew that just because a product is curly girl friendly doesn't mean it's gonna work for your hair. And this is something that I find myself saying a lot to people in my Instagram messages. If you have a product, you've used it in multiple different weather conditions, you've tried applying it multiple different ways, you've used it with multiple other products that you have in your stash trying to see if a certain cocktail works, it might just not be the product for you. There are plenty of products that I've tried that I just don't like. There are products that I've tried that tons of other curlies love that I've used on my hair and been like, I am not getting those same results at all. Everyone's hair is different. So just because I use something and get good results with it doesn't mean that you'll get the same results. Now I do wanna caveat that you should definitely give a product a fair chance. So making sure that you're trying it multiple times and really experimenting and trying to make it work for you. But after a while, if it's still not working, it's probably the product. And here's the thing. I have a pretty sizable product graveyard from when I first started the Curly Girl Method, which I know is financially an issue for a lot of people. 
you can't really afford to keep buying products that you're not going to use. So here's what I recommend. First off, seek out brands that have sample sizes. Innersense, Anasi, Bounce Curl is coming out with sample sizes soon. Let's see. Eco Slay. Just off the top of my head, those are a bunch of brands that have travel or sample sizes. Next, shop at stores that have return policies. Sephora and Walgreens are two off the top of my head that have two-week return policies, no questions asked, even if you opened and used the product multiple times. And lastly, be smart with your purchasing decisions. Of course, when I first started the Curly Girl Method, I was looking to people who had hair that looked similar to mine to start with my initial purchases. But once I started to learn a little bit more about ingredients, I learned that I love high protein products and products that are on the heavier, more moisturizing side are not necessarily gonna be my favorite. So once I learned that about myself and knew what ingredients to look out for, I had a lot easier of a time buying products and kind of keeping my consideration set small. And even with all of that work on my end, knowing what I like and what works for me, there are still products that I buy that seem to fit all my criteria that still just don't work out. And that's okay. Not every product is going to work for you. Alrighty guys, so that is pretty much that. I hope this video was helpful for you new curlies out there, and if there's anything else you guys want to see me cover, make sure to leave it in a comment down below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys soon.